hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Mihai Stumbea. I am uh, CTO and co-founder of Fuse, uh, a project that I've, uh, together with uh, my uh, friend and business partner, Salman Hussein, we have started um, around one year ago. We, we've been living in the UAE for many years, and we believe that our, the UAE leaders have a very good direction and we believe in their words of wisdom. As I said, uh, I'm um, a CTO of Fuse. Both me and uh, Salman, we, we've been working in the in automotive industry for many years now. And um, oh, sorry, I don't do public speaking very often. If I freeze or <laughs> my knees are shaking, please don't call Navios. I'm okay. Uh, also, I'll be using my nose from time to time. I hope that's okay. So, uh, we, have, we both have years of experience in automotive industry, and we're very passionate about classic cars and uh, electric vehicles, and uh, we believe in um, finding solutions, uh, engineering solutions. We are the first company dealing with uh, converting electric vehicles in, the, in UAE and in the region. Uh, we started the project around one year ago, as I said, with uh, converting a Volkswagen Beetle from petrol to electric. You can see it in the expo, it's at uh, our booth, 1136. Uh, right now we're working among other projects on uh, a world first 4x4, but I will come back to that immediately. For the Beetle, we've used five Tesla modules, uh, around 25 kilowatt hour um, power. Uh, right now it goes from zero to 60 miles per hour in six to seven seconds. You know the old beetle was a turtle, we turn it into a rabbit. And that's not, uh, that was the easy part. Uh, I'll talk about a bit later about the challenges when we're going into the Nissan Patrol. But first, why have we started this, this uh, project in the first place? Climate change and CO2 levels are, are rising. And uh, the transport industry has a big impact on that. 20% of the world's CO2 emissions come from road transport alone. And of course, we all have to work towards addressing this climate crisis as soon as possible. There are over 1.4 billion cars on the road, most of them petrol. And they will become outdated. Slowly, slowly they become outdated. But that doesn't mean they have to become obsolete. Transitioning to a recycling economy means we have to take advantage of yesterday's effort and bring it to the 21st century. That means less carbon, not only as you're driving, but less carbon as producing the car because the car already exists. This matches this direction matches the uh, recently announced United Nations Sustainable, Sustainable Development Goals, which promote reducing and recycling of existing goods. Uh, most of the auto manufacturers have big plans for EVs in the years to come. However, in pursuing the goal of making the price lower, the initial price for the car lower, they skip on sustainability. They, skip, they sacrifice serviceability of the car. The best um, example is uh, with a, a Tesla. If you have problem with a, a battery module, they will replace the entire battery pack, the, not just one module. It's built that way. Uh, for uh, one of our projects, we found a scratched Tesla and uh, we've uh, taken out not only the batteries, but also other components. The Tesla was uh, declared not worthy of repair, but we found new life for a lot of components and also the biggest impact, the, uh, the battery pack. This way we are addressing the issue of promoting upcycling the goods that come from the car that are already built. Our supply chain is, not, um, is, is trying to maximize not just the donor car, but also the components of other cars that have already um, become obsolete. Now, why we're focusing on, on um, classic cars? 
Well, we, ha we have to start somewhere. <laughs> um, and uh, in a world that uh, has more and more identical cars, we believe that uh, we can bring, a classic car brings the style and the identity of the driver back into the world. Who hasn't turned their heads when seeing a classic car passing by, or taking a video, or taking a, a picture? Yes, sports cars are fine, but uh, I'd rather drive a 1963 uh, Aston Martin, you might recognize it from uh, James Bond movies, or the Shelby Mustang, the 1967 um, model that you might have seen it in Gone in 60 Seconds. No doubt, classic cars are cool, and there are very nice cars, very nice classic cars in UAE. Unfortunately, they become less and less um, maintainable. But we are here to help. Our solution address addresses major issues that enables faster transition to our uh, sustainable mobility. Expanding on that, UAE is not um, only underserved when it comes to identity cars, it's also underserved when it comes to 4x4 electric vehicles. Which brings me to the topic of the presentation. One of our no next projects, the project that we are currently involved in, is converting the classic Nissan Patrol, the fourth generation, the Y60, to electric. Why Nissan Patrol? Because, first of all, nostalgia factor. <laughs> The, Nissan, the model Y60, it's uh, very um, popular here. It has, been, it ha has been here since UAE was in the um, ex exponential growth period and is very popular with um, Emirates. Today, this car is a symbol of uh, local off-roading culture and it's used uh, extensively at uh, festivals. Uh, you might know about the uh, Liwa Tal Morib festival. We want this car to be ready for that festival in December. Take it and present it and show it off there. By, com as I said earlier with the Beetle, by converting the car to electric, we are also increasing its power, its um, strength, its durability. We're, uh, the, this is the actual donor car. We're not only gonna be um, converting it, we're also gonna restore it to its initial image. The second reason we're going with uh, the Nissan Patrol is, as I said, there is a huge market gap with the 4x4 vehicles in the region. Now, as I said, uh, discussing a bit about the challenges that we faced converting, elect uh, converting the Beetle. Who can tell me what do a battery and an egg have in common in UAE in the summer? They both get cooked. <laughs> this is why we had to come up with cooling system that uh, it's not common for com electric conversions. Uh, most of the companies that uh, do conversions, they focus on air-cooled or um, liquid-cooled system. We are one of the few people that do integrated refrigerant cooling system into the batteries and the components. Second challenge to, the, um, to converting the Beetle was to bring it to 21st century. And for that, we have built not only the hardware, but also the software platform to get the data from the Beetle and present it visually. Most of the conversions, they don't have this. They, have, um, they just present the car as it is. You have just a level of um, the battery and sometimes the temperature of the batteries, but not that much. We have... Um, Going forward, beyond the conversion of the Nissan Patrol, we are looking towards talking with uh, companies that have fleets of vehicles that, so that we can upgrade to 
the electric uh, conversion. We, uh, our plan is to use the knowledge that we're gathering from the conversion of classic cars to put it in normal cars, in normal fleet vehicles, where we can use our apps to uh, minimize the, um, r the route timing, optimize the, um, the time that the cars are being used, and in the same time, show um, what's the fleet status at any moment. Uh, this mes makes a lot of sense because, as I said, there are, the cars are already built. They are out there. We just need to bring them to the, back to the, uh, into our plans for the future. One of our um, goal is to change the mindset of people over what electric vehicles should stand for. Building new vehicles, it's nice, but we already have cars that, have, that already have been, been, been built. In the same time, for the cars that are being brought new, a new Tesla has been put on the market. After some time, it, uh, as I said, in, uh, in crashes or it becomes uh, outdated. We take the parts and we give second life to the batteries and the components through conversions. Um, this is uh, what... <laughs> uh, this is what uh, I had today for, to say. If anybody has questions, please. Okay, so I actually have a question for you. Uh, how do you plan to address the warranty or repairs of the cars that you are um, converting? So would you be providing an after-sales service? Yes, we will, we will be providing after-sales for this. Um, our first uh, um, approach is people that have already classic cars, they can come and we'll do the conversions. In the same time, there's also the possibility if you want a classic car that, uh, to be converted, we look, we, search that, we source that car, we convert it, and then we uh, give it like a full solution. Thank you. Hello, thank you so much, Mihai, for the lovely presentation. And my question is um, more towards the legacy and uh, building the legacy in a sustainable market right now. We have a lot of cars here, and uh, you know all of them are electric, electric, right? And how you see your project in the nearest future in this in this market, which is like emerging market right now, the electric cars? Yeah, as I said, this is a um, we're addressing the gap that the new companies leave in their wake, because. You have the new cars, which, yeah, they look great, but you have the old cars and some people are, are um, emotionally attached to, to their car. I, for example, if you have a Nissan Patrol and you don't want to throw it away, you grew up with that car. You want that car to be part of your um, life. So we're just giving a second life to it. That's quite impressive, what you're trying to achieve. I okay. quite like the part when you're talking about, you know, approaching the fleet customers and educate them and to convert their yes. existing fleet to possibly electric cars to give them a new lease of life. But how about the supply chain and the number of batteries? What I understood from your presentation is that largely you are dependent on the donor cars. You do not have uh, this is sustainable supply of the batteries. Yeah. Correct. No, the, the donor car, I was referring to the, the car, the, the classic car. All right. Not the, the, um, not the actual, the car that the batteries come from. Okay. So, yes, of course, we have this option to get parts from other vehicles. 
Okay. But we also have the option to put new uh, batteries, packs, or uh, new um, right. components into the car. When I was thinking about the donor car, it was strictly the car that you bring to us. All right. To be and converted. To be converted. Yes. And uh, the, the conversion kit is you have enough supply and... Uh, Yes, we have capability our... Capability to capability to convert a large number of units to, to the electric vehicle. Yes, we have two types. That's why I said we have this po these two possibilities. Not only that we can use new batteries, packs, and new components, we can also use components from uh, cars that have already, already been um, damaged. Off the, or... the road because of certain yes. reasons. Yes, yes. All right, thank you. Understood. Does anyone else have any questions? Hi, good afternoon. Hi. Uh, how are you? Uh, a bit emotional. <laughs> I just had a, uh, I know, it's fine. Uh, I just wanted to check out, this Fuso is made in where? Where it is made actually? Is, is it, it UAE made or it is which country? UAE based. We are based in Dubai. So the parts and everything will be manufactured here? Yes. No, I know you are based here, but we where the part, the end part comes from? The end parts that you're referring to the components? Or yes, to components, the yeah. Components, we're sourcing them in different parts of the world. Not, oh. not only, but the conversion happens here in UAE. And uh, how much it, uh, approximate, how much it takes time for the conversion of one vehicle, approximate? It, de it all depends on uh, the, what you want to put on the, the power that you want to put in the car. It because it's, on the power. Yeah, yeah, because, uh, for example, the electric motor, we, uh, it, it depends on, depending how big it is, what kind of conversion you want to make, it depends uh, where do we get those components. For example, for the Nissan Patrol, we, we found this uh, Tesla, which we, are, we stripped apart, and we're gonna use components from uh, it, the batteries, the motor, but if you want, um, for the example, for the Beetle, we have used the NetGain Hyper 9 motor, which we brought it from US. So it all depends on the conversion itself. Uh, in case if we want to have the pricing on the different models, yes, you have that something which we can get it from you? Yes, yes. Yeah. We can have a discussion with uh, Salman. Uh, Salman and uh, Fine. he can Thank help you. Thank you so you. much. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi there. Thank you for your presentation. Hi. Oh, I'll give it to you in a sec. <laughs> um, Natasha Tarak from CNBC. Uh, I apologize, I missed the first few minutes of this session. Could you quickly um, go over how, so how many sales have you done so far, or is this? No, we are a startup. Okay. This, uh, the Beetle is our first project, and now we have a couple of other projects. Um, Nissan Patrol is one of them. Okay, so this is still sort of in a beta? It's a startup, yes. Okay, okay, and do you have a timeline, a projected timeline for when this would actually start to be enrolled in the UAE or not quite yet? Yes, we have. But uh, as I said, you can, uh, have, after the session, we can uh, yeah. have a discussion with Salman sure. and uh, we can... Okay, okay, perfect. And do you have any partnerships ongoing in the UAE with any government bodies or...? No, actually, we want, this is one of the things that we are trying to address. Uh, we are ready to, to help um, the government parties, the regulate, regulatory parties to adopt um, proper regulations for this kind of um, setup. Great, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, Sarah.